You don't need to master coding before starting to apply for jobs. What you do need is a few high leverage job ready skills. And the good news is most of them you can learn in under 30 days. So in this video, I'll break down the exact skills that will make you stand out to employers even if you're newer to coding. Let's get into it. So my name is Zazo. I've been coding for over 10 years and I've been in the tech industry for over eight years. And I've held different positions from software engineering all the way to data engineering. So in this video, we'll be going over some skills that are not coding, however, can make a big difference in you standing out to employers. So the first one is going to be version control. Every position is going to have some type of version control. So that's Git, GitHub. Every team uses version control. It's not optional. It's actually one of the bare bones requirements of working in software engineering. You can learn basic commands like git init, git commit, git push, and how to open pull requests. So what you want to do is make your GitHub profile your resume. So pin your best projects, document them clearly, and this will give the employer is a good sense of you do know how to use version control and Git. So the next one is actually going to be APIs. So APIs are essentially how modern apps talk to each other. So some things that you want to do is focus on building things that fetch data from APIs like OpenWeather or SpaceX or any other public APIs. If you can build any type of bigger project that incorporates an API um, type of fetch of data, doing something with it and being able to essentially create an output based on that data, it's going to put you above the rest. Or you could do something like putting a, you know, grabbing data and putting it in a dashboard, doing some data manipulation and putting it in a dashboard. So one of the examples that I did when I started um, coding is I made a what's called a DCF calculator. And with that calculator, essentially, you're finding the intrinsic value of a stock based on a method called a discounted cash flow. And I used a bunch of different APIs from Yahoo Finance to pull numbers and a bunch of different other stock charts in order to grab data and manipulate the data and essentially give me what is a fair value for any given stock. So the next one is going to be SQL and databases. So data literally runs everything. Learn the basics of SQL and relational databases like Postgres and MySQL. You can even learn some NoSQL databases and be able to speak on both and what are the differences of both. I have been asked this question before about what is the difference between a um, SQL and NoSQL database. So that's not something that every employer will, will ask, but it is good to know both. And you can learn roughly in a, in a few days. So it's not a huge lift. So you wanna focus on write operations. So create, read, update, and delete, right? You wanna to try to incorporate that into your projects to really show that you know and understand how to work with different databases and how to use SQL. So I would recommend incorporating this into any app you're working because any app that you're working on because every app that we know today has data, holds data, stores, retrieves data. So this is a must. And it's actually not that hard to learn if you just dedicate some time to it. So the next one is actually one that is for more of the creative people. I mean, for non-creative people too, but it's going to be responsive UI. So nowadays we have these great looking UIs and sometimes it can be easy to take it for granted. But if you see different websites that don't have good UIs at all, you definitely notice. So having a decent understanding and how to create a, a really responsive UI that can work on mobile phones, desktop, or things like that is really kind of, I would say, an undervalued skill, not undervalued skill, but a lot of work can go into that, especially if you're really good and really creative and you can make these great responsive and nice designs and stuff like that. It goes unnoticed because it's kind of the norm that you have a good type of you know, UI and that it is supposed to be responsive. So 
in order to kind of level this up, you want to learn things like C CSS, Flexbox, Grid. Um, you can learn some media queries or even something like a framework like Tailwind CSS. I tend to go toward the framework route. UI is not my best or my strongest suit. But I tend to work with things that are a little bit more out of a box. But if you are more of the creative type and you do like this type of stuff, then it might be a little bit easier or more creative to kind of go into something like Flexbox, Grid, and kind of do that stuff because you can customize pretty much every little detail. My focus is more on the back end. I like the data. I like the manipulation of the data, doing different things with it. Um, but this is a very good one to have on your resume and be able to show to employers. So the next one is actually going to be deployment. So you know what's better than building something? It's actually deploying it so where real people can actually start using your application. I think this is a really cool thing, concept that I still haven't wrapped my head around yet, but it's such a cool thing to be able to build something one, and then two, being able to actually put it out there for others to use, and you can get feedback and make different modifications to it to make it that much more of a well-built application, right? So you wanna learn to host your projects on things like Vercel, Netlify, or even GitHub pages. So for the backend stuff, you could try Render or Railway. So hiring managers actually love when your project is live, so don't skip this. For a hiring manager to be able to go in and use something that you've built is kind of like one of the best things ever. Instead of you just talking about it, you can put it on, you know, on your GitHub, on your resume, and you know, basically point them toward or whether it's on your portfolio website or whatever, and point them toward an active user application that they can use and really see what your talent is, is just a great thing and will give you a good, good impression. So this one is last, but definitely not least, all right? So you want to practice working like a real developer. So what does that mean? Bunch of different things that you can work on to work as a real developer in kind of a real environment. I don't, I don't know what that was. So you wanna learn how to read documentation. Don't get me wrong, ChatGPT and all these things are great. However, sometimes there are changes to documentation that ChatGPT does not pick up. And when you're writing your code, you have outdated stuff that's working all wonky and, and breaking and doing all types of things. So you wanna learn to read documentation. I found even though there's a lot of I'm up front with reading documentation, once you get comfortable enough with that, it makes the process of building so much easier because you know exactly kind of like what are the things you're looking for you know it's in the documentation or you know it's not in the documentation and you're able to work effectively but yes chat gpt and all those types of things are out there but get familiar with reading documentation as well so the next thing is kind of what i just said chat gpt or googling make sure that you're doing this effectively so you're learning these different types of concepts when you're googling or chat gpt and you're actually applying them and being able to move efficiently and optimally as possible. So you also wanna be able to ask for help. So that can come in different forms. You can be on a forum, wherever, but get used to asking for help. Get used to asking very specific questions. Get used to asking very specific questions and really understand how to kind of get your point across with simply because there's a lot of mumbo jumbo nowadays with people just talking and saying a whole lot of buzzwords you want to make sure that you're really when you're asking your question be very detailed and what you're trying to solve and what your problem is another thing is being able to communicate clearly this is such an underrated or undervalued skill in the market. A lot of software engineers cannot actually, they're very good at what they do, but they're not good at communicating it or being able to one, ask questions effectively, business questions about what does the business partner actually require for this application that they're building or this feature. So communicating effectively, not only within your team of other tech people, but also with non-tech people. And this is really not, that hard to do you can you literally communicate probably every day in some form of another um, if you don't please do um, but go out and talk to somebody and just get kind of dialed in on the art of like conversation 
and being able to really communicate effectively and those types of things. The main key of all of these is you want to show that you're more than just able to code, that you're thinking like a software engineer, and that you're able to do everything that that job role encompasses, which is going to be communicating with others. It's going to be, you know, getting requirements, system design, all of these different things. It's more than just coding. You have to think like a software engineer in its fullest form. So you don't need any type of degree. You don't need X years of experience to do this stuff. But what you do need is you do need skills that matter. So sometimes we can tend to focus on things that don't matter. Focus on these skills and focus on some skills that matter and really get good at these. Obviously coding is important and is the bare minimum, but you also want to focus outside of those skills. All right, so love, peace, and chicken grease. This is the end of the video. Let me know if you liked the video. Leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel. Welcome. All right. And I'll see y'all next time. I'm out.